Well, actually, it's a really interesting uh, fact I learned the other day. Uh, it's a farmland's grain trader was explaining around what the grain market's doing globally, and it's all being driven uh, out of China as they have not only rebuilt uh, pig numbers because of backing from the African flying. Uh, African swine flu, but also they may nearly be in a surplus. Uh, looking forward to talking to our next guest on that. And this recent report well, it illustrates that global food prices are surging ahead and there's no sign of it actually slowing in 2021. The commodity prices have surged uh, almost 50% since mid last year, causing concerns over price, food price inflation around the world, sometimes resulting in increased export taxes and quotas uh, by producers at, at a time when importing countries uh, want to import more. So we're joined now by Rabobank Senior Commodity Analyst Charles Clack to discuss the broad implications uh, on the global commodity price surge. Thank you so much for joining us from across the ditch, Charles. Pleasure. No, pleasure to be uh, on the programme today. Hey, let's just start on that, following on from our conversation there with David Baines. I mean, the Chinese are stockpiling grain, I understand, and uh, those pork numbers nearly in surplus in China. Absolutely. That's part of one of the you know, real reasons we've seen this price surge um, across agri-commodities around the world. Uh, a big factor is the way in which importers of agri-commodities are perhaps stockpiling more or, or front-loading their demand um, and purchasing more now rather than later in the year. Uh, and a big part of this in several commodities, um, but particularly the feed grains, has been China. Uh, and China you know, imports large volumes for its hog herd for other animal proteins. And so, you know, Commodities such as corn, soybeans have been in high demand um, into, into China, a huge amount of shipments going in. Um, really, yeah, some of the nom- numbers have been phenomenal, really. Um, and um, yeah, we, we don't see that abating quite yet. Uh, and it really seems to be a flow largely from the US um, to China. It's part of the US-China trade deal. Um, but also we see Brazil and South America really um, you're receiving a lot of demand from that side. We are very used to it here in farming food and fibre. Uh, when there's a price surge, we prepare for the fall, but what caught my attention is it's unlikely to revert. What will underpin that? So uh, there's a couple of factors underpinning this uh, this surge and, and this sort of, uh, I guess, elevated price level that we see. Uh, the big one we've just touched on, global demand, we see that being quite strong, um, both from countries who are looking to perhaps stockpile a little bit more, front load their demand, but also corporates. We see corporate balance sheets with more stocks on hand, you know, to working stocks, because, of course, the uncertainty caused by COVID uh, leads them to, to just have more there available. A couple of other factors. US dollar weakness has been a key one. Over the period um, you know, where we've seen agri prices rise about 50%, we've seen the US dollar weaken about 7%, which is a, is a factor. Um, there's weather risk, which persists. Um, it, it continues now. We've seen that weather risk in, in Russia, uh, South America, you know, potentially in the US, and that doesn't show signs of abating quite yet. Uh, and the last factor, uh, perhaps one that we can't sort of rest uh, our outlook on, uh, but certainly is having an influence is, is you know the influence of, of speculators um, you know really following uh, you know these these trades higher uh, and looking to profit mm, yeah absolutely when it comes to uh, the food import tax on the rise and the the other implications that we don't see in quotas etc with a lot of trade negotiations are still on the table how do you believe um, price surges will have an impact in those negotiations with the threat on sort of food protection protectionism in some of these countries as well yeah, so that's been um, quite a big factor in the likes of in, in the likes of Russia and also in in South America in, in Argentina. We've seen these countries where you know suddenly export prices have been very very strong, uh, and you know, really for for growers and for those operating uh, in these industries, it's been a really lucrative trade to to send these uh, you know to send these commodities through the door out onto the export market. Now, of course, that's uh, all well and good until the government gets uh, a little bit concerned about you know self sufficiency, and so we have started to see, yes, these these exports sort of quotas or or taxes being brought in initially in Russia. We've seen that now being brought into into Argentina as well. Uh, And so, yeah, that is kind of a concern. And again, it's not necessarily just governments acting on the sort of the import side uh, and looking to purchase more or provide more quota there to import. But it's, yeah, certainly on the export side as well, having a major factor. Um, Charles, geopolitically, 
uh, between particularly China and Australia, uh, there's been some incredible tensions uh, blocking products, but certainly everyone's forgotten about that when it comes to what's going on at the moment. When people are hungry, things change, don't they? Yes, absolutely. They they really do. Um, and, and that's, you know, a big factor. And suddenly, you know, when things become a little bit more uncertain and, and when, you know, the world's kind of thrown into, you know, this kind of, um, you know, things that haven't happened before, it, it, we certainly, yeah, we certainly see, you know, uh, products and, and sort of, yeah, I guess, negotiations, tariffs changing quite quickly. Um, it is worth noting, though, while uh, you know, with the, we, we talk about this price rise, it is in sort of U.S. dollars, and we are looking a lot at the, you know, the U.S. dollar uh, markets, those futures which are kind of benchmarked, uh, yeah, in U.S. dollars, of course, and, and you know, through uh, yeah, you know, the U.S. markets. So often, you know, U.S. fundamentals play a key part. Um, so you know, when we look at actually that, that relationship with China and Australia, it's quite interesting to see that there are still quite a lot of products that, that China is um, yeah, still not you know, purchasing from Australia, cotton being one, of course, barley being another, uh, and then, you know, sort of wine and and other, um, you know, value added products. Um, And so, yeah, that's, you know, that is playing a key part. It's interesting, though, because while on the one hand, you know, the premiums that are paid, perhaps, you know, if you're on the the, the sharp end of these negotiations, you know, these these geopolitics um, have have diminished, those premiums have sort of disappeared for Australian cotton. Well, actually, because China's purchasing large amounts from the rest of the world, well, the global price has gone up. Actually, the margins are still very strong for our growers. So unintended consequences by China that Australia is sort of benefiting from. So, oh, yeah. very yeah, in, interesting. Indirect uh, impact, I guess, yeah. Very interesting, very interesting. Hey, Charles, you've got um, such an insight. And while you're there, you know, what is sort of one of those things that we think, you, you think that we should in New Zealand, uh, farming and growing food and fibre, be seriously making sure we don't take our eye off this year? Yes, good good question. I think, well, firstly, for everybody, not just sort of the farming community, but the big worry, of course, is, is food inflation. Um, you know, we start to see that coming through, particularly for those commodities which are you know, quite direct to consumer, uh, ones which don't have too much processing. See, so the processing takes, uh, you know, eats up some of that margin. But, you know, direct to consumer, we could talk sort of, you know, sugar, um, you know, things like coffee, uh, th- those sorts of commodities, um, you know, we could start to see inflation there. Um, for sort of the farming community, uh, I think the big, uh, well, the first big sort of impact uh, for us and, and the worry that we have is is on uh, feed prices and, and rising feed uh, costs for, um, of course, imported, uh, yeah, imported grains, imported oil seeds, um, you know, things like soybeans, corn, um, you know, palm kernel as well, potentially. Uh, all these things have been included and have been big factors in the price rise we've seen over the past uh, six months or so. Uh, and so, you know, that does, of course, feed into tightening margins for certain farming systems so of course it's it's good to keep an eye on that uh, and the, or uh, yeah it's uh, yeah those margins are still there yeah absolutely charles played nicely into what was our opinion maker on sarah's country last week around the changing um f- winter feed systems here in new zealand with our fresh water rules and how imported feeds and uh, will play into that but if that's on the rise um things don't look good in terms of a tightening system so well, let's see how uh, it all plays out. But uh, as always, Rabobank uh, with their finger on the pulse. So I really appreciate your time, uh, Charles Clack there, uh, talking to us from across the ditch in his role with Rabobank. Oh, nice boots. Yeah, thanks. They're new. <laughs> ben, Ben, you all right? Oh, yeah, sorry, mate. Just me getting pretty hardy. Eh? You. Yeah. I just said to myself, Ben, work hard. You deserve new boots. 